Good morning everyone and welcome back to Brazil. This is part number seven of my 2022 Brazil series. The last video was in Santos in real time. That was about a week and a half ago because shock horror, it takes time to edit videos. I'm in a little area called Bishiga, which I'm hoping I didn't butcher. It's in a larger area of Bella Vista and it's like the Italian area of the city. I'll come on to that in a little bit. And today is Sunday morning. It's raining a little bit. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> and as a result of that, I'm gonna have a nice relaxing, chilled, afternoon today and not worry about filming an overly complex overly dramatic video so um let's get going So I don't really have much of a plan for this video. Sometimes that's a good thing. I'm in a little park or there might be a plaza I can't remember which one Dom Orioni um, and I'm in an antiques market can you believe it? Um, did you know that I love antiques? Shocking, right? Um, but when I say antiques, I don't mean things from like 1872 or whatever. I mean stuff that is slightly more recent. Look at this, restricted area. Pro persons without proper ID will be strip searched. Brilliant. So you've got things like little irons and radios and there's cameras and stuff and lots of coins. Bits of sewing machines and all sorts. I love this sort of stuff. People might say that it's like old tat or junk, but not for me. <laughs> oh, beep beep. Um, look, we've got old cameras. How cool. Uruguay, load of old keys. Like that sort of camera, like we would have them in the 80s, right? <laughs> um, and um, are they saccateurs? That's the word for that, isn't it? Bolt cutters. Yeah, all sorts of junk, but you know, if you appreciate this sort of thing, which I do, it's really cool. And I'll tell you a story in a minute as to why I love this sort of thing. <laughs> Look at these old clocks. Love these. If you're an antiques geek, you'll love this place. So I've read this market has been in operation since 1984. That's almost as old as me. Every Sunday, I'm assuming they have a day off, like if Christmas falls on a Sunday, I don't know. But uh, I also read that this market is basically the equivalent of one I visited 13 years ago called San Telmo in Argentina in Buenos Aires. That's where I gained this love of this sort of junk tat antique market. You know, I bought this red phone. Remember back in the day, like for people my age and older, um, you know, the ones with like the receiver and the dial thing, you know, Generation Z wouldn't have a clue. The ones where you dial the number and like if you make a mistake, you have to start all over again. People have it easy these days, right? There was also a crossbow that I was gonna get, but then I couldn't put it on the plane, obviously. But I've gotta say, it's definitely not to the same degree of liveliness as the one I went to in Buenos Aires. I don't know if it's because of the particular day I'm here or the fact the weather is a bit crap. Um, but yeah, it's slightly smaller, I would say, definitely less lively. I remember that one in Argentina, there was like a big brawl between like a group of men. <laughs> so it was definitely more active. This is the sort of stuff I love. Look, a really old calculator. I didn't know Hewlett Packard made calculators. Like, I would have that sort of thing when I was at school. You know, all these um, clocks and cameras and stuff. There's a microscope there wonderful and it's you know it's all very sort of 80s you know is that like a staple remover or something i don't know but look an old polaroid i guess it's like a is it one of them water cameras i remember that camera i'm sure i used to have one of them barry manilow greatest hits <laughs> oh yes the musical instrument area that's not something i haven't touched on actually since i've been in sao paulo the main memory i have of being in this city years ago is the whole music aspect and so many music shops everywhere you've got guitars You've got violins, trombones. I think I used to play something like that. Is that a tenor horn? I can't remember. That was like early 90s. Um, there's a flute over there. Um, you may know that I would love to learn the oboe. I used to play the clarinet. So um, if I found an oboe here, I would literally explode. This is amazing. An old Brazilian 
cash register. Jesus, I wonder when this was from. A long time ago. <laughs> My um, red phone that I had was similar to that, but a bit bigger and um, darker red as well. But, and of course it's got the, the buttons rather than the dial. So it's a bit more modern. These are sort of very 90s, aren't they? Oh, there's one with the dial. Remember that. <laughs> I really like this market. It's kind of like cute and quaint, if you know what I mean. I think I must have been like an antiques person in a past life or something, because I've got this bizarre fascination with random phones from 1987. Um, but I wanted to touch on something that um, really annoys me about long-term travel. And the problem I've always had is the fact that I can't come to somewhere like this and buy a little clock or buy a red phone or buy a crossbow or, or something, because obviously I haven't got the space for it and I'm always moving about and I haven't got a home. I haven't had a home in all that time. Um, and you know, people say that, oh, uh, a traveller can't get souvenirs, a traveller can't get a fridge magnet, bollocks. Um, there is no difference between traveller and tourist. You know, if you're, if you're a long-term traveller and you want to pick up things, that's absolutely fine. Don't think that you can't do that because you're this, you know, elite traveller person. We're all bloody tourists, all right? And it kind of makes me think of the future because when I do have a home in Poland, I'm planning to move to Poland long-term, I would love to be able to kit out my place with things from my travels but unfortunately I haven't got anything you know I've got things from the olden days when I did small trips like that red phone but you know it's one thing that I do miss out on uh, it's something to think about if you're thinking about traveling full-time because it's a real downside I'm not quitting travel I'm not giving up travel I'm moving on there's a difference in a positive way I want to move on to do something different with my life that's normal that's fine to do we're not meant to stay in the same position our whole life are we if we did go crazy. As with Sao Paulo and indeed much of the rest of Brazil, a lot of um, immigration from everywhere, but particularly Europe, you know, there's definite sort of European feel to a lot of the architecture. And this area is very much like street art extravaganza. I love it. You know I love this sort of place. It's just so colourful. With different styles of street art everywhere. I love this up here. Stunning. There's a lady, I think, is she trying to use stilts? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and as well as that market, um, it, when I was walking here, there's a road up there, which I can't remember the name of. Um, and indeed here as well, there are also shops with antiques as well. Um, so it's not just that market. Um, this area was supposedly an area that slaves came to, to avoid being slaves. Italians came here in the late 1800s and of course I guess that's why there's that Italian feel or European feel. I wouldn't say it's necessarily Italian Italian but you know because obviously places develop. It definitely has a bit of a different feel to some areas of the city. It's, it's you know this that's what this city is about. It is so diverse and you can go to different areas and it will have a different feel. Of course being Italian area and um, there's lots of Italian restaurants we've got pasta there there's this thing here um cannoli never heard of that in my entire life obviously there's a uh, gelato and tiramisu I don't know what accent I'm doing but <laughs> whatever um I need to find an ATM and I might have some food see what I mean about buildings that um restaurant there it's called 13th of May um am I on that street um I think that was the day that slavery was abolished in Brazil so, um, yeah, they've named a street after it. Yep, I am on that street, 13th of May. It's getting a bit more lively now. People are turning up. I think I must have come here a little bit early today. There are also these cantinas slash taverns slash kitchens everywhere. Um, I'm a bit confused. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to do. I think you have to wait to go in and it's, yeah, it's just like a restaurant, you know. Um, but I still need money. These cantinas are absolutely packed. You know, it is Sunday lunchtime. Um, as you can see, no tables available anywhere. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go without food and this is actually a good opportunity to describe my greatest frustration with Brazil which wasn't a problem the previous two times I was here so I have two bank cards Revolut 
generally globally accepted, right? Um, and my ancient UK bank card, which I never use, um, neither of them work. Although my UK one does in selected ATMs. By selected, I mean one. Um, therefore, you know, accessing money is a nightmare. The double problem on top of that, it's compounded by the fact that when you do manage to get cash, a lot of places don't accept it. I'm not moaning about it. It's just a frustration. I can live with it. But, you know, honestly, it does make life difficult in Brazil for foreigners. Um, I don't know if it's just me. Has anyone else had this problem? Let me know down below. You might be wondering, um, why didn't I check before I got here that my cards would work? Well, honestly, I didn't check because I haven't had this problem in like 21 years of traveling, um, except maybe like early 2000s in like Thailand or something. It doesn't happen nowadays, but apparently it does. Okay, Hans, once I've crossed this road, I'm going home and I've decided to do what I did in a Mexico video once, which is get an Uber Eats from that area because my card does work for that. Yes, this is quality travel content. Oh, here we go. Brilliant. Fast forward a little bit later and I have food and look, I've even laid the table. Let's see what we got in here then. Okay, these are the um, cannoli things. I got three of them. Nice. Um, where's the rest of it? Oh, right, okay. I, I can't get in the bag. I've got, okay, I thought it'd be bigger than that. It's um, bolognese gnocchi. Okay, that'll do, innit? And I've also got parmesan. I'm one of those people that with Italian food, I have to have like about a bucket of parmesan. So as I said, quality YouTube content, I'm having a takeaway. Sometimes this happens, especially during the whole corona thing. That's all we were doing, right? And I thought I'd point out, I'm going to be completely truthful. One thing I absolutely hate about filming travel videos is the bloody food bits. I just hate it because, you know, you have to get all the shots of the close-ups and then the whole eating thing. And by the time you've done all that, the food's gone cold. And the thing I hate the most is like, you know, fake smiles and like pretending that everything is amazing that people eat when actually it's probably just average. Hmm. Yeah, it's average. Actually, it's quite nice with the Parmesan. It's good. I think without the Parmesan, probably be a bit shit. Only thing is, I should have got like two of these because I'm an absolute greedy gobble gannet. I could easily eat two of these because I'm bloody starving. Job done. So I've shoved that down me gob in about 15 seconds. So it's on to these beautiful angels. Will they be beautiful? Let's see. I just thought they kind of look like little dog turds. I'm sure they don't taste like that. I've read on my phone that apparently they originate in Sicily. I've been there. I didn't have th these there though. Um, and these ones I got are filled with Dolce de Leche. I mentioned the Dolce de Leche donut I had in a favela years ago. It's quite possibly the best thing about Brazil because it's just ultimate. Okay, cannoli. I guess it's a similar word to cannelloni, right? Mmm. Crunchy. That pastry. I don't really like it. The Dolce de Leche is good, but I'm not too keen on the exterior. Okay, that was Bishiga. Thank you to the ATMs for not giving me money. Um, but whatever, um, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't like, you know, crazy bonkers wacky um, day out, but it's a nice thing to do on a Sunday, a nice little walk and a nice way of exploring another part of the city, which, especially in a, a city like this, you know, you could spend literally years here and still not visit everywhere in the city. Um, so, you know, it's very much uh, an indicator of the multifaceted city of San Paolo. So don't forget to um, like, subscribe and all that shit. Um, and I'll see you next time. Um, I'm going to finish these beautiful angels and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Catch you later.